Hello friends, welcome. Uh, as promised, today we have a special treat for you. Uh, our good friend of the congregation, Simon Abbott, and also our uh, uh, well-known Eric DeCorby have agreed to put on a little organ concert for you. Also, an organ tour where we take you inside the workings of this beautiful instrument and show you why it's so unique and special. So um, uh, I'm pleased to introduce to you uh, Simon and Eric, and uh, the first uh, thing they'll do is play a little bit of music and then take you um, through the organ, and then we'll wind up with a little bit more music again. So thanks for joining us. Hope your week has been going well, and hope this finds you in uh, uh, good health, and um, uh, blessings to you this day as you listen to this uh, music and, and enjoy uh, at least pretending that you're in the church building. Hopefully we can get back in here and listen in person very soon, but uh, for now, uh, this will suffice. Hello, friends, and now, Brought to you by the lovely Eric Corby, a piece from Massenet. Uh, it's a meditation, but it's part of an opera called Thais. Thais sounds like a French name, actually Greek. And um, uh, here's a bit of organ trivia. We know who invented the organ. It was a, a Greek fellow in the third century. He lived in Alexandria. His name was Ctesibius, but his wife's name was Thais. So, um, you know, the folklore of organ is that Thais might have been the very first organ.
Easter hymn. Uh, this one is Lass uns erfreuen, which in the Easter context in your hymn book is Now all the vaults of heaven resounds. Of course, it's also got lots of different lyric settings. I feel like every Lutheran I've ever talked to thinks that every chorale was written by Martin Luther and the music by Bach, but that's not the case. This one, for instance, is from the 1600s, so much after their time, and it comes from Cologne. But where did these wonderful chorales come from? Well, actually, a lot of them were adapted from drinking songs and uh, folk songs that people would sing, because, like Martin Luther said, why should the devil have all the good tunes? Uh, this particular setting from the hymn book is actually done by Ralph von Williams in the early 20th century. He's the master of hymns. So this is both the ancient German hymn tradition with a modern English hymn. Hello friends, welcome to a tour of the beautiful tracker organ here at Grace Lutheran. Uh, it was built by Copy Ann from Chilliwack, uh, British Columbia in 1994, and it has 1,054 pipes. There's some things that make this organ extremely special. Uh, perhaps you'll recall Pastor Larry saying that uh, visiting organists for festivals choose this instrument to come and practice on. Today we'll show you why, and we'll show you why it's arranged in the special way that it is. Um, this particular configuration is often called uh, the Hamburger Prospect. And if the prospect of a hamburger has you excited, as it does me in these lockdown times, uh, I hope you aren't too disappointed by, by uh, the fact that it has more to do with the shape of the organ. So you'll notice the organ seems to be in two parts. There's this part here, smaller pipes, and it uh, has these nice shutters that will open and close like this. This is uh, the smaller piece of the organ. It's called the Schwellwerk, or the swell in English. Uh, and it is controlled by this pedal, so it's what allows us uh, to do expressions uh, going loud to soft. And the top part is the main organ in English, the great, or as the Germans have it, the Hauptwerk. And there's one third part, which is the pedals will connect to a cabinet at the back of the organ. Each one of these is kind of its own separate organ, if you can imagine. And many hundreds of years ago, they called it a set of organs. Let's go look at each one of those. 
We're now in between the main section of the organ and the cabinet for the pedal at the back. These are the biggest pipes in the organ. Um, the biggest ones at the far side here, a low C, is um, almost 16 feet long. Uh, and we are lucky enough to have a 16 foot reed in this organ, which um, for an organ this size is very unique. As you can see, some of the pipes were too big to even fit in this large casing. And so they had to be sort of spun around like a trumpet uh, just to fit inside. Here we are up in the main part of the organ and you can see all the different families of pipes, um, each one with a different set of sounds. And they go from the smallest, the quiet, uh, the highest pipes in the organ, all the way to these eight foot guys. This rank in the very front is our trumpet rank. When you hear Martha playing like big fancy uh, brass sounding stuff on Easter morning, this is, these are the pipes here that she's playing. I'll pull one out to show you the inside. If I take off the boot, you can see it's actually quite long on the inside. And at the very bottom, there is a uh, small reed made of metal that's held inside the shallot. And that vibrating is what makes the sound. All the other pipes are just like flutes. They're done with a fipple, but this one is done with a reed, kind of like a bagpipe. Here we are in the swell part of the organ, and you can see, again, all the different pipe families. And those are all the different shapes that make the different sounds that you hear. Um, some of them are kugelförmig, they've got that little chimney on the top. Some of them are gedacht, they've, they're covered at the top. Again, this one in the front is the reeds. Reeds are always near the front because they need the most tuning. You can see where we have to get at them to tune. And maybe I'll pull one of these out to show it off. There it is. I'll pull off the boot. Can I give that to you, Eric, to hold? Um, as you can see, all the other pipes in here are kind of like flutes. Um, they make their sound with a fipple, like a recorder. But the reeds actually have a little metallic reed on the front. And there's the tuning slide that controls it. And they sound a little bit like a bagpipe when that reed vibrates back and forth. Pull that back, put that on. I'll have to tune that up later. I'll say to Eric the same thing I'll say to all of you. If you ever handle one of these pipes, make sure you wash your hands because they're made of lead and you wouldn't want to, you know, get poisoning. What makes this organ particularly unique is that it's what's called a tracker. Uh, all the other organs in the city are, um, they use electricity to connect the keyboard to pneumatic valves that control the air accessing the pipes. But here, it's entirely mechanical. The only electrical thing is the fan that produces the, the wind for the organ. So um, I've pulled off the front so you can see the inside. And each one of these keys is connected to a, like a, an elaborate Rube Goldberg-esque kind of mechanism that will transfer the key action to uh, a mechanical action that controls the pipes. You'll notice that if we look up in here, some of the biggest pipes are on the left hand where the low notes of the piano are, but some of them are way over there, which means that in some cases you'll play a note down here and it has to be rolled all the way across to get access to the low pipes on the far side. We've opened up the rest of the organ so we can take a look at the inside. Here we are inside the tracker of the organ and you can see all the mechanical action. These long wooden rods are called the trackers. And uh, again, Eric's playing the keyboard so we can see some of them go. How about her there, Eric? You can see the elaborate mechanism that transfers the me mechanical action of the keyboard all the way to the top of the organ using these runners here, the trackers. Um, in addition to the keys, the stop knobs are also a mechanical thing. Perhaps, Eric, can you pull a stop? There we go. And this also uh, is an elaborate mechanism that s pulls a slider underneath the uh, rank of pipes in the top and that's what lets the wind access those pipes. So a combination of the right stop being opened and the right key being pressed will open two kind of wooden valve kind of things, some technical <laughs> explanation, and that's what allows the note to sound. Okay, and here, this is where uh, the sound all starts. The electric blower, which is um, below, will blow air into this box, and this box uses these weights on top to compress the air and that is the air that gets released up into the pipes to make the sounds. And this organ has this crazy, crazy thing. Uh, Eric, can you pull the tremolo there? This little pallet, this bellows here, um, pops up and down. And it, if you look, it literally shakes the, the, the wind supply. And that's what gives that vibrato-y kind of sound to the pipes when you pull that stop.
And now we'll show off some of the sounds of the organ. Uh, how do organists use all these? Uh, you'll notice that some of them have different numbers on them. It means that they have a different uh, octave frequency. So here's a C on the eight foot. This is kind of like where it would be on a piano. The four foot is an octave higher. And then we just keep going up an octave at a time. When we pull a whole bunch together, kind of sounds like one note, like an organ, but it's actually made up of several different frequencies. And then you can use those frequencies together to get different kind of sounds. So for instance, here's a jazzy kind of a feel. Eric's favorite, the hockey sound. Here's a little bit of jazz just to show off uh, some of the range of the instrument that we don't usually get to hear uh, in service. Normal stops kind of sound like this. The reed is that trumpety kind of sound. And uh, Eric put in a request for full organ. So here's the general hymn kind of sound. And then adding the reeds. bits from the other side. This style of instrument, the trackers, are the best suited for Bach, you Lutherans will be happy to hear. Uh, it's because of the clarity of sound and the control that you have, which none of the electric organs can come close to. Uh, this is from uh, a French suite. It's a, a dance, an allemand. <laughs>
Thanks again for joining us today. Uh, friends, we're um, getting a little bit more used to this distance thing, but uh, boy, are we ever excited about the next time we could be in here together and maybe have a live organ concert like we did last year. So um, keep watching for updates and uh, we'll uh, see you on the live streams for worship. And uh, boy, God bless your day and have a good weekend.